Well, in our last video, we looked at soil texture and coarse fragments, the proportion of sand, silt, and clay. In this video, we're going to look at how those individual particles are arranged into larger structural units. And we would call those aggregates, or more formally, we call them PEDs. So we're interested in the size and the distinctness of those PEDs, and we classify that as soil structure. Soil structure is very important for root movement and water movement in the soil. And in this profile, for example, you can see that almost all the roots of the grasses are concentrated in this upper A horizon, for reasons that we'll see when we look at the structure. The B horizon has some large roots from the shrubs in it, but far fewer of the grass roots. And again, the C horizon only has the coarser roots of the shrubs associated with it. So a very important property for the uh, movement of roots and of water. When we're talking about structure, we're talking about the larger structural units or PEDs in the soil. And we classify them using three criteria. The first is the grade, which refers to how distinct the PEDs are. Are they easily recognizable or do they fall apart easily? The second is the kind or the shape of the PEDs. And we break those into uh, uh, classes defined by the Canadian system of soil classification. The final one is the class or the size of those individual PEDs. So we'll begin with the grade. For structural uh, analysis, we need a larger volume of soil. So typically what we have to do is go over to our face and use a shovel or a knife to get a relatively large volume of the soil. So here I'm taking a volume suitable for structural development from the A and the start of that B horizon. And you can see how they separate into those distinctive PEDs once we've separated from the, pace, the face. If I only use a trowel, I only get a subset of these structural units. So that larger volume is very important. What I've done is put some of these units up here and we'll look at them in terms of our structural classification. Think of a sand dune. A sand like that has no structure. It's just single grained. At the other end, we would have a very high clay deposit with no aggregation. We'd call that a massive structure. In between, the PEDs start with very small granular structures, move up through block-like structures into larger prismatic and columnar structures. So what we're doing is assessing the, uh, the kind, the shape of the structure, how distinct they are, and what their size is. So we'll begin with the distinctness, or what is called soil grade. The A horizon, you can see the very large amount of root material associated with it. When we move soil out of there, and just as an example, I'll use a sieve here, place it in there, and we'll place a sheet underneath it. And when I work that soil, a very significant amount of it falls through the sieve. So it's not anywhere near as well structured as that upper soil was, or the B horizon was. Approximately about 50% of it goes through the sieve, so we'd say is unaggregated, and about 50% is retained on the sieve. And we would call that a moderate grade. The B horizon, on the other hand, has very distinct structural units associated with it. There's very little of them fall apart when we take them out, so it has very strongly developed grade or very distinct PEDs. So the grade for this is strong. The C horizon is somewhat more like the A horizon. It, when we take it out, it falls apart into smaller units, but it still has these larger units associated with it. So again, we would call that a moderate grade. The next step then is to look at the kind, the shape of the structure, and the size. The A horizon at this site, if we look at the structural units associated with that, they are relatively small units, 
and I can use charts which are in section 3.8 of the field guide to look at the size of these various structural units. And basically what I do is compare the size of the unit to the size on this page. So the A horizon then, the PEDs are relatively small, they're granular, they have many faces, and they would be medium to coarse granular structure. The B horizon on the other hand has these relatively large structural units so they're oriented this way in the profile. So this is the long axis. And to distinguish between prism-like and columnar, we need to look at the top of them. A prism-like one has very sharp faces and a very flat top. So these ones would be columnar units. And for the class or the size, we look at the widest diameter, not the long axis. So we compare this largest diameter to our charts here. And these ones are over 50 centimeters at their widest diameter. So we would say they're coarse columnar units. We also try to break these units, just using our hands, into smaller units to see what they break into. Okay, and these ones are very, when they break, they break again into quite large units. Okay, so we would say the primary structure here is columnar, and then these break into units. They have many faces, so they're subangular blocky, and they would be coarse subangular blocky. So primary structure, columnar, breaking to coarse subangular blocky. The C horizon again has these columnar units, not as strongly developed as in the B horizon, and the diameter is smaller associated with these. So typically they're under 50 centimeters, which makes them a medium columnar unit. Again, when we break these apart, we can see that they break much more easily than that B horizon did. Okay, the dominant size of it, again, they have many faces, so subangular blocky, but they're a smaller version of subangular blocky, and those would be more medium to coarse. As I mentioned, the type of structure is very important for root movement. That A horizon has these very favorable granular units, and that's the structure most preferred for root penetration. Unfortunately, cultivation, often we lose these well-developed granular structures and the structure becomes more unfavorable for root penetration.